guys, welcome to the Fireball Mullet channel. For those of you that are new here, this is all about my 85 IROC Z and all the projects that I'm doing it from the LS swap to the LSA conversion. All the cool projects coming up soon. It's gonna be a nine inch rear. We're also soon going to upgrade the T56 to the T56 Magnum F. And I also have a tick performance uh, shifter coming as well. So I think that's gonna be one of the next videos, but this is gonna be part one of two of how much did my swap cost. In part one, we're gonna to cover today is gonna to be my NA build before I did the LSA conversion. And part two will be how much did my LSA cost on top of the swap. So this first one's gonna be you know, everything I go over, the fuel system, the wiring system, basically all the components, the front accessories, and procuring your engine. And then I give you how much it costs me and all the different components. And I actually show you that on my spreadsheet that I've been tracking since I've had the car. So I'm actually gonna show that on my computer. And then I'm gonna give you sort of like a low buck option if you were to have a donor car, for example. That's the option that I decided to compare it to. So if you went and bought an LS1 F body car, how much would that end up costing you as a comparison? And so that's pretty cool when, it, when we start to talk about that towards the end of the video. So uh, guys, subscribe. I know a lot of you guys are, are watching this and finding it helpful. Um, please subscribe, that helps uh, benefit the channel and also tells the masters of the third gen Google and YouTube universe that uh, we're doing this and everybody wants to uh, you know, share knowledge and that's really what this is all about, sharing what I know. I'm not an expert in anything, so hopefully take this as part of your research. Again, the cost is how much I did. Now it's a few years old. It's been three years since I did the NA, so it's gonna be a little outdated, but just use it as a guide not as like, hey, you know, you're 25 cents over on that. Yeah, stuff changes, right? So use it as a general guide. And my other tip for you guys is find a build where you're, it's very similar to what you're going to do. So find somebody who looks like they have a similar budget. It looks like they have a similar, uh, the sort of your power adders or whatever you're gonna do to the car. Find somebody that's doing something similar and then just do what they do. You know, try to figure out all the different swap parts because you can mix and match and sometimes you run into a corner. Uh, you back yourself into a corner. I've seen some guys with tubular, certain kinds of tubular K uh, members versus stock. Uh, there's so many variables in here and then what setbacks plates. So. Uh, you can certainly use mine as a guide if you have this budget um, or, you know, obviously uh, you can find used parts to kind of reduce this budget down that I'm going to share with you guys today. But please don't tell my wife because, I mean, she's I, all the receipts I basically burnt. So I didn't want her knowing about it. So whatever you do, don't tell her. OK, so let's get started with today's video. I'm super excited. I've had a bunch of questions about this. Let's get it rolling. All right, guys. Well, let's take a look at the different areas here. So the first one is obviously the engine. The next one is you got to do a cam in it for these LSs, the wiring, then the transmission, in my case, a T56, the exhaust system. Then we'll go over the fuel system, the cost of suspension, and finally, finally, all the finishing touches that you'll need, such as belts, etc. All right, guys, so we're gonna first start with the engine. And this is, or the motor, this is going to be whatever you're gonna use to build it. In my case, I did a LS3 and I bought the short block off of Craigslist and then I kind of rebuilt, did everything to it. So I started with that long block. And of course, my whole build is I wanted to everything to be new. So these prices are everything's new all the way down to the every sensor, right? I'll also, later, I'll go back through these. These are if you did an LS1F body donor car. So I'll go back through that as an option for you. 
next round. But for this, that's how much I spent on the short block LS3. And then I started for about a year, just started buying piece by piece, um, you know, the intake manifold, uh, the spark plugs, you know, just, just about everything that you can see here on the list, one by one, all the sensors, even the oil cap, <laughs> everything was just purchased brand new. And so you could see that starts to add up quite a bit if you start to look at the, you know, the, the, how this thing totals up. So every single piece here, even like the coils, uh, the power steering pump, the brackets, I ended up using the Dirty Dingo accessory brackets for F-Body. You can also, I would suggest the ICT billet. Uh, Matt, Walter, Matt Walter sells that and um, Walter Racecraft, he sells a bunch of stuff and I'll, I'll put some of that stuff out here. So you can see here, even the coil, I also use the ICT billet coil re relocation or it's just a coil bracket. It kind of cleans things up for it. So that turned out really nice. The starter's new, the uh, oil filter and map sensor. Like I said, everything's new. So this is kind of what I ended up spinning here, you know, which if you go buy a crate motor from GM Performance, it's about, you know, last time I checked, seven to $8,000, depending on what horsepower range you want. And mine is actually more than that 525 kit. All right, let's look at the cam. Please do a cam if you're doing an LS swap here. <laughs> These things, LSs love a nice cam in it. So of course I did a new cam retainer plate. I did the BTR Stage 3 NA cam. And of course all the valve springs and push rods, the BTR push rods as well. The, you're gonna need a three bolt timing gear uh, for that LS3. And then the chain damper, this is something by Trick Flow. It kind of goes back to the LS1 style instead of the LS3, which is a tensioner, which has been known to fail. That's up for debate. Uh, assembly lube, all the different tools that I'm also gonna need uh, to pull the balancer off the front, as well as removing the springs because you gotta basically replace everything, uh, those springs and the head. So you need a compress, kind of a compressor tool for that. And then um, everything else, I'm just gonna go ahead and take out this flywheel because I, I think I have that under the T56 area here. Um, so I think I originally had that here just because I needed to turn. And oh, actually I used the tool to lock it. Uh, it has, uh, it bolts on the starter and locks the flywheel. So I think that's why I did that. So I could torque down the, the balancer. So this is just, you know, a great, you know, power adder. <laughs> um, just go for it, you know, and get that cam going. All right, for this EFI, if you run an EFI, if you ran a carburetor, that's a different story, but I ran the GM Performance Parts, the LS3 controller kit. At the time, I think I only paid a thousand or 1100 bucks. It was like a Black Friday. Right now, in these days and times, get the Holly. <laughs> Terminator setup. It's so much more flexible. It's so much nicer. It has a lot of features that this just doesn't have. This is kind of outdated in my opinion, but again, I went this route because I wanted it. How would GM do this car today? But I would definitely recommend you doing the Holly Terminator. There's other ones like PSI, uh, as well as Current Performance, and also John Classic, I think his name is on thirdgen.org, thirdgen.org. Those, those are options for you as well, or you can just make your own, and I'll go over that in a minute with the F-Body uh, donor car option. But for the most part, this also included like the drop-out wire pedal and everything kind of you see here, um, including the, the bosses for like the map sensor, the map sensor and the exhaust O2 sensors. So it came with some cool things, but at the end of the day, I think you would be better off just spending uh, the Holly. And I increased that a little bit more here because I think it's 1300 bucks now. And of course, you're gonna have to change your fuel system. You're gonna need a return line for this, right? 
So what I did is I used all fourth gen and third gen stock lines, which I feel like is pretty economical. When I did originally did my NA setup, I didn't use any braided lines or the C5 Corvette or anything. It's all stock fourth gen T block that returns back to the regulator, which is in the fourth gen tank. Uh, I also use the fourth gen tank because I like how it prevents fuel starvation because it has that bucket. You can opt not to do the fourth gen tank and just keep your third gen tank and then do the typical uh, C5 Corvette filter that has the, the return style filter on it. Uh, and Matt Walter sells that as well. So you can choose to do that. For me, I just, you know, I wanted to keep it all stock. I really, at first, I wasn't a fan of the braided line stuff. I just wanted to keep it kind of stock looking. And so I'll go over if you did uh, some other options here later, like if you had the F-Body donor car, obviously you would have all this, but I did you get uh, a, a couple extra things here. This costs for about $476, maybe a little bit more, cause I don't think I have uh, a few little minor things, maybe some O-rings and stuff like that. But uh, for the most part, it. It was pretty economical. If you did all braided lines, braided lines and all those fittings will add up quick. So just know that, right? Now the sending unit, you gotta get a zero to 90 ohm and that's by Herco and it's only like 26 bucks on eBay, right? So that's something that you're gonna need because if you do the fourth gen tank, the ohm reading is different and your gauge won't read right. So you're gonna need that zero to 90 ohm sender unit and it just kind of clips up into the fourth gen tank that's pretty good the other thing i did is this racetronics kit i did the hot wire kit because i feel like the stock third gens wiring for the pumps are inadequate so i did the hot wire kit that has a relay that runs off the alternator and it also has a walbro 255 pump and that also has if you buy it for the fourth gen, it has the siphon in tube that goes in the bottom of the, of the uh, bucket. So T56s are skyrocketing. If, sky if you're doing an automatic, you'll have to adjust for that. This is a T56. I would do a, today I would do the T56 Magnum. I bought this used and it pretty much had everything packaged with it. But today I would, it's definitely worth getting the Magnum F the new Magnum F that places the shifter in the right in the right spot. So also get the Tick Master. That thing is super nice and it's gonna improve your shifts as well. So those are my two tips for this. All right guys, it's the fun exhaust time. <laughs> well, besides the highly complete kit that has the two and a half duals all the way back and their long tubes, you will have to pretty much do a fat, have a muffler shop or do-it-yourself custom wild pipe so you can save some money if you can fab it yourself. The standard is the speed engineering long tubes. They're a super great value. So I highly suggest this uh, setup unless you do the Holly, which is complete and you don't have to do any modifications. All right, guys, get the Hooker Blackheart cross member. It has the exhaust hoops. Get some subframe connectors to keep it from twisting. And of course the ICT mount plates is pretty much the standard super great stuff there all right all the finishing touches you're gonna it's gonna nickel and dime you guys but just get this stuff new i did do the cold air intake uh, you build it kit that is offered by air raid so you can basically cut it the way you want it but you're gonna need the oil and the coolant and the belt and the hoses right all right guys here's the cost everything that's totaled up from my build right and we'll go over again if you did a f body ls1 donor but the engine total cost fifty eight hundred dollars i think is a pretty good value for everything being super new the cam was about a thousand fuel system about 500 and that could be more or less depending on which route you go with that custom c5 filter and lines versus stock stuff wiring uh, fifteen hundred dollars you could probably do the Holly Terminator and have that all set up as well. The T56 3000, hey, get the Magnum F <laughs> for that amount. Just get that, it handles all the power, like 700 foot-pounds of torque, so do that. You've got the exhaust, 
uh, as well. You're going to spend some money there. The suspension is another area that you're going to have to spend. And then all the finishing touches, guys. The belts and the hoses and the cold air intake and all those different things are going to just add up. And so you're going to end up spending that amount. So all in all, you know, grand total here, we've got, you know, with the suspension and the finishing parts here, once you add all this up, these are really the main areas. It's $14,000. Uh, I feel like I had about 15,000 in my head. And honestly, I didn't really go through and add all this up until now. I'm trying not to let my wife find out about it. <laughs> so, um, so now she's going to know, but Hey, it's been so long now. Now again, this is the NA build. I'm going to do a part two for this on the LSA part and how much that costs on top of this NA. But let's go ahead and talk about this low buck F body LS one donor option here, right? So you can see if you bought a car with a T56, now this is a LS one, it's not a LS three, but if you bought a donor car, man, you just get everything with it. Like it's almost worth buying a decent donor car if you're going to do this. So for the value, trying to find a decent F body donor car is just going to give you, if you look at everything that I purchased here, brand new. Now, again, all these things on your donor car are going to be used. So your water pump might go out unexpectedly unexpectedly you know all those different things your sensors and stuff but for the value man look at this i mean look how much you could save you're gonna get just about everything in here now i would still recommend even though you're doing the f body donor car put a cam in it so that cost you're still gonna have to change so nothing's really gonna change here as, as far as i'm concerned guess what that f body donor car if you can work with the wiring, there's plenty of tutorials on how to do that on thirdgen.org. Strip it all down and make your own harness. It's, I mean, if you're really trying to save a buck, just put in the time, take your time, and make your own harness. It's definitely doable. And if you have the time and you really want to save the money, that's the way to do it. All the wiring to your sensors, everything is there. You'll still have to do things like adapt to your gauges and things like that. But for the most part, you're going to have everything to make your car run. So I would suggest, you know, this is a great value here as well. Another great thing, especially if you go my route and just use all fourth gen, you've got the tank already with the, with the donor car. You've got all that thing. Now I would suggest still getting the Racetronics hot wire kit with the Walbro 255. Uh, it'll work with that with that setup, but the F body LS1 donor, man, look at the difference here. So you know you're still gonna. I, I would suggest buy a new pump and that sort of thing. If you just wanted to use it as is, you could. Uh, so just you know add or subtract depending on how you want to do your fuel system. Uh, if you want to do the Corvette C5 filter, you want to do the stock fourth gen stuff or you just want to do your custom uh, setup as, 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 you know, the way you want to do it. So definitely some options there. Again, all the braided lines and the C5 filter. If you do that all custom and don't use the stock hard lines, that stuff's going to add up quick. I'm telling you, <laughs> I had no idea until actually I did the LSA conversion here recently, how much those fittings are. So just kind of adjusting here for a couple of those things. Uh, the, the fuel plumbing and all that, this is actually part of that T-block, the lines and all that. So you're gonna have that if you do the donor car, right? So I'll just go ahead and, and kind of adjust that. I think I spent 60 bucks. I think I bought it from Hawks actually. Uh, and they just sent me kind of the fourth gen stuff. And for your F-Body LS1 donor project, again, save a buck. You're going to have a T56 if you, or auto car, right? Uh, probably want to do the 4L ADE uh, if you're doing an automatic. Is, is, is basically what everybody is trying to do if they're running higher horsepower. Uh, but you could run the 4L60 if you wanted to and take that chance. Uh, but so, you know, you're going to get all that. I would still recommend getting the master tick, uh, master cylinder there. And so a couple of these things I would actually still recommend getting, 
but for the most part, you already bought the transmission. I don't think really anything changes on the exhaust. Now the fourth gen and third gen cars, the back half of the cars are the exact same. So if that car has something that you want to use from the back half of the car, all the mounts and everything else actually work on a third gen. But you're going to have to still do some custom Y-pipe adaption there. And then you're still going to want to, for the you're going to get the cross member, you're going to get that hooker. <laughs> and everything else so the suspension stuff is pretty much the same and then the finishing touches again I'm just going to carry that over because I feel like you just need to get all that new anyway so the grand total here if you compare it wow look at the difference there right it's it's like eleven thousand dollars difference so how much would that donor car cost you and of course again it's a ls1 but if you really wanted to do this swap and do you know a great swap at it, you know it's it's you know you could take this one level more and and kind of do some junkyard uh, sort of hunting and things like that and do your own fabrication and cut this down even more right if you could fab up your cross member and you can fab up uh, some other things this you can actually bring this down I bet quite a bit to probably two thousand bucks right. And so how much would that donor car cost? I don't know. Uh, if you find one wrecked, you could probably get a really nice deal as long as everything else is nice. Um, or, you know, just maybe buy a decent one. I don't know, 5000 3000 I mean, if you look at what I've got in my car, uh, you know, what's it worth? And so if you can find a really nice donor car, it has everything. The brackets, the front brackets and accessories. All that's going to work, right? You don't actually have to buy the ICT or Dirty Dingo front brackets. Um, so just kind of looking at the value here, it just seems like, you know, unless you just wanted to go everything new like I did. Now, mine's not the upper. You know, you could also get a K mem tubular K member. You can get tubular A arms, right? Add a grand to that. Uh, you can go the holly route if you go the holly route all their stuff just works as a system and honestly you know if i were to go a couple notches from where i'm at that's what i would have done all right guys fifteen thousand dollars is what it cost me yep i forgot to add the front accessories and i had a separate tab that was further down in the spreadsheet and i missed that and i was like why wow, i'm still thinking it was fifteen thousand before i started this and i mentioned that on the video so it was fifteen thousand I did all new front accessories, alternator, power steering pump, like everything was new. And then I also had the Dirty Dingo brackets and the upper AC mount as well. So by the time I bought all the brackets, brand new and all new front accessories, uh, I think it ended up being about a thousand dollars. So we'll tack that on. So in my video, I showed 14,000, it's actually 15,000. Give a day a thousand, right? <laughs> well, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Uh, if you haven't, check out my other video where I kind of walk through uh, the details on how I did my LS swap. That's another one. And then I'm gonna be doing a part two to this because as most of you guys know that follow the channel, I'll put an LSA blower on it. So how much did I just add to this? And don't tell my wife again, please. All right, guys, thanks and uh, please subscribe and we'll catch you next time.